So I'm, I'm going to talk about um, higher rank lattices that are not very connected to like mapping class group or not, not as close as some people might want. Okay, or um, so, so I'm, I'm going to kind of like give, give an introduction to just like um, high rank lattices. So. Um, so, so, so just like the setup of my talk is G is going to be a semi-simple Lie group of trivial center, okay? Trivial center, and so, so G is could be identified as the group of isometries of um, of what is called like a symmetric space. And uh, so, so the case, so, so there are, um, okay, the, the examples to keep in mind is just G PSL to R, which correspond to two hyperbolic plane. And, um, but, but this one is what is called like rank one. So, so it's, it's to keep in mind, but it's gonna be a bit different. Because I'm going to talk about the case where G has higher rank. Okay, so 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 let me uh, write this somewhere. So he, G is going to be a higher rank. So rank greater or equal to two. And and so so this is rank one. And, and what is the rank? The rank could be defined algebraically or geometrically. So, so geometrically m m means that like this symmetric space, it, it has negative curvature, strictly negative curvature. And geometrically in this case, it, it, it means that the curvature is, um, is non-negative, sorry, non-positive, but it could be zero. So, so there are like, actually in this case, you have a copies of Euclidean space, R to the M, where M is the, is the rank of, of this space. So, so, so like here the, the examples to have in mind is SL3R and the SL2R times SL2R, okay? And, and, and here you, you could see like the symmetric space for this one is, is just H2 times H2, and, and, and for this one, yeah, the, the, the symmetric space, okay, it, it's not something, it, it's, it can, can be identified with this SL3R mod SO3, always, like the corresponding symmetric space, is you, you take the maximal compact subgroup, and then you quotient, and that's, the, the, the symmetric space, and, and and you could see like here there, um, you know there there are copies embedded copies of R two which correspond to you just take a geodesic in the first factor, geodesic in the first second factor, and and that would give you an uh, the product of that would give you an embedded copy of R two in, in in the manifold. Um, so. Yes, so so, uh, so gamma is going to be a, a lattice. Gamma is a lattice, discrete group, such that uh, the volume of X mod gamma is, is finite. And uh, so, so I'm going to give you like examples. So, so there's an example that I think all of you know, which is SL3C in SL3R. It's a lattice. So, so, so this is one example to, to, to keep in mind, but, but, but there's like my favorite example that is SL2 
z square root of 2. So this is example 1. And example 2 is this one, so 2 c square root of 2, which is a subgroup of, of, of SL2R. Right? But, but, but it's not a, a discrete subgroup, right? Because c square root of 2 is, is dense in R. So, so, so this actually is not, is not a lattice here. It's not discrete. So, so you have to, so, so there's a way of making discrete c square root of 2 into R times R, which is looking at a number and its Galois conjugate. So, so you do the same thing for, for matrices. So you just look at the embedding here that is sending this matrix into the product of the two matrices. In the, in the sorry, in the pair of matrices, where, where this sigma is the Galois conjugate, which is just sigma square root of two just minus square root of two. So you, you change all the entries where you see a plus square root of two to a minus square root of two. Okay, so um, yes, yeah, so, so, so these groups actually are, are qu qu quite different. SL3C to SL2. Z, it's, it's really nice, I, I mean, like, how different they, they are, but, but, but nothing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but, but nothing, but what should I say now? <laughs> so, um, let, let me see what should I say. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so, so I was I, I was going to tell you something that that these lattices have that the lattices in in in, in rank one don't have is, is is this thing which is like called like rigidity. Okay. And and what does rigidity mean? It it means or. Um, what is more or less like the idea is that if H is some group or some class of groups, then any homomorphism of gamma into H, it, the idea is that it comes, should come from from a nice algebraic construction, okay? So this is very, very vague, very vague algebraic construction. And okay, so, so you probably know most of rigidity, but I'm not sure if you know Margulis super rigidity, but maybe you know Margulis super rigidity and um, so, so, so this is Margulis super rigidity, which is generalization of most rigidity, uh, and, and it's um, so theorem of Margulis that that imply that all lattices in higher rank are come from constructions like this that, that are called like arithmetic lattices. So, so, so this this was kind of like the main. Theorem that had a, as a corollary this, and, and it says the following: that it says that it is when H is just a linear group or a group of matrices. So it says that I, I'm just going to state it for SL and Z when n is greater or equal than three. But but it works for for all higher rank lattices. You just have to wiggle things a little bit, okay? And and it says that. If you have a, any homomorphism from this into SLMR or GLMR, let's say, then it actually it should come from a continuous representation of SLNR. Okay, so, so there is the, the natural inclusion here. 
okay, the, the inclusion map. And then it says that there exists some phi bar, which is continuous. And, uh, and this is kind of like the, the amazing thing that, you know, these things are just classified in terms of like, like the representation. It's just like the representations of, of, of this group. And it says that, yeah, so, so, so what are the hypotheses? The hypothesis is this, and uh, maybe, you know, you have to put some hypothesis that the, the, the image is infinite, and uh, okay, you have to put a little bit more hy hypothesis that the image ha has to be Sarisky dense and not compact. Okay, so it's, I, I'm not gonna put it. But, but uh, and it's actually not really true for SL and Z, but, but okay, I'm, no, I'm not putting a lot of things, you know, but, <laughs> but, but, but it's true for a finite index subgroup. So, 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 so this actually, so you have that phi restricted to a finite index subgroup, gamma prime is equal to phi bar of, of gamma um, of, gamma prime for gamma prime in gamma of finite index. Okay, so, so, so this has like some geometric interpretation in terms of like this, this locally symmetric spaces. So it's telling you that if you have two of these locally symmetric spaces, x mod gamma one and x mod gamma two, and then you have some map some topological map, then this map is ho homotopic equivalent to a Riemannian immersion, okay? Uh, uh, up to some, some error, so, um, some wiggling, okay? Some, so, so that's like uh, Margulis super rigidity. And then, you know, you could try to see if, if this holds for other class of groups. Uh, um, so, so I'm gonna tell you, like the, the, the Simmer program, what it's about, that is kind of generalizing this. When you put H as, as the group of homeomorphisms, of diffeomorphisms of a manifold, yeah, so, so what is this? So it, it, it tells you exactly the same thing as, as this, like Simmer program, maybe I'll put it here. Which is kind of from the 1980s by Robert Zimmer, which says that you know actions by by diffeomorphism. So, so he was thinking more volume-preserving ergodic actions, but just like like the conjectures go more more general, and and you could think maybe there's a classification. Of, of, of actions by homeomorphisms, and it says that they should come from nice algebraic actions, okay? I, I'm not sure why I'm writing this again, but okay, nice algebraic actions. Are, are there any questions? Yes. Of some field, numerical field. It, it, mm, I, I, yeah. So, so, for example, SL two R acts in, in, in like the in the circle. You know, this is like a nice action. Like this is it. it it's it comes from like an action of on a quotient of, of like the circle is is G mod a group the para minimal parabolic group is G mod P. So that gives you like an action. You know, actions on quotients of G by nice least subgroup, subgroups or just least subgroups. Okay. Um, so, so what else? Yes. So, so, uh, so because we're talking about mapping class groups, let's talk about mapping class groups. You know, I, I said like I have to say something about mapping class groups. <laughs> so, you know, these people <laughs> is gonna fall asleep. You know. <laughs> So, so, so let's like, um, 
so, so this is, yeah. so actually, I, I have a lot of interest in, in, in mapping class groups because I, 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 well, you could think of this in the case of a surface and then you have like these actions on all these mapping class groups. And uh, so let me tell you something here about like a the theorem of Thomas Hedel. So ca can you think of like a nice action of a Lie group in, in, in the mapping class group? I can't, okay? So <laughs> the, the, this is what it, this theorem says, it's like, it, it, or, or in a hyperbolic space, it, it says that if gamma into G is, okay, it has a, as a consequence, so something, okay, G simple, higher rank, Okay, higher rank, it's always my hypothesis. Then it says that any action of gamma into the isometries of, of a hyperbolic space, so X is a, a mm, Gromov hyperbolic space, then it's then is, 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 is elementary. Elementary. Okay. So elementary means that the image, like, either has a, a, a finite orbit or no, a, a bounded orbit, bounded orbit in in this, or, or fix a, a point in the Gromov boundary of, of this space. Yeah, and, and and he didn't have any conditions, so it applies to you know, mapping class groups of infinite type, if, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, like all, all these mapping class groups that we have seen. Um, yes, so, so as a consequence, you can prove, corollary, you can prove that so, so this is theorem to Farb Kaimanovich, but okay, this gives another proof is that the, the that this any homomorphism to the mapping class group of, of a surface S of finite type is is finite, has finite is finite. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and there are actually actions because these groups always like, for example, these groups are act, act, act on trees or products of trees or because y y you know, there's like SL2 QP or SL2. So, so if you mod out by, or, or you, you look like in a periodic field, like corresponding to to, to, to a prime ideal in, in this ring, this has like natural action on, on this like called like Bruhatid buildings and like trees. So, so it, it does have, but it, it always like have like some fixed points, it, it can act, okay. M maybe a, a every group act in like a hyperbolic space in an elementary way, but okay, but anyway. Um, are there any questions? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, actually, there's like a generalization of Furman, Bader, Caprachi, and Sisto, which prove that always, so for example, when you have a na action in a nice hyperbolic space, then, for example, th this one, why does this theorem does not apply to this one? Because you know it acts in in H two. This one acts in H two, and and it's because SL two R times SL two R is, is not simple. But, but but what they prove, like 
this uh, furman bader caprachian system is that all actions in nice hyperbolic spaces come, are, are just like the action in H2, okay? Coming from these projections. So, okay. Then I'll, I'll tell you, but okay, so, so I'm gonna continue talking about this and, 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 and I'll just describe like, I'm gonna state our main theorem with, with Bertrand. This was 2020. Is that it's about actions on, on the line or the circle, okay? So it's just when um, okay, uh, R or S1. It says that first, um, if if G is simple, one is like if, if G is simple, then any homomorphism of gamma into homeo of the circle, let's say, um, is finite, has finite images. Is okay. And uh, and, uh, and the second uh, part it says that if so, so so actually this work always when you simple or um, G has no SL two R factors because in in the case of SL two R factors you have an action in the circle like the natural action coming from the SL two R so it says that if that if I have an action, if G um, is SL to R times, you know, other things, then the action is semi-conjugate to the standard, uh, to, to, to this, okay, PSL to R, because I was talking about with trivial center. Um, um, then it says that, any action is, is conjugated to, to the one in the in in one of these circles. So so let me write this. So it says that um, there exists an H um, degree one. Mm -hmm. Such that for every gamma, in, in gamma, then the action of, um, from S1 to S1 of, I have here my original action, but then I have the, 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 the action coming from the, pro, the, the projection. So it's just, what Nic Nicolas was doing here. So, so this diagram here commutes, okay? So let me, phi gamma. See, this in the case where it's either that or, 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 so it's one, or, or, or the image of, assuming, maybe let's say, assuming the image is infinite. Yes? So if you're, 
Yes, yes, Th then your conjugate, see, actually all of them are going to be non-conjugate, and yeah, you just co conjugate to one of the, those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this in particular implies, or like this says that, uh, okay, no, nothing. No, I, I was going to say that the natural, these natural actions of lattices in SL2R in the circle, they don't lift to actions on R. Because if you could lift it an action on R, you could get a different action on the circle because the circle is just the one point compactification of R. So you could get something non equivalent, but of, of course, uh, this is different. So, so what, what does it say in the case of, of, of the line? It says that all the homomorphisms are actually trivial, okay? H have finite image, and, and therefore, like th these lattices are, are not left orderable. So, um, yes. Are, are there any other questions? Yes. Do you have to assume that D is infer, or is it okay if D has no inverse? No, no I'm, I'm saying that either G is simple or G has no, I mean, it works for any semi-simple group, finite center, trivial center, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Mm. So, in rank one? It, it, no, yeah, yeah, so when it's, or oh, rank one, it doesn't work. So, so this m m might be true also for, like, for example, quaternionic hyperbolic space, which is a rank one Lie group that has property T and, and has like this super rigidity holds. But, but yeah, so, so nothing is known for complex hyperbolic spaces or quaternionic hyperbolic spaces. Really, we know like very, very few w which of them are left orderable. There are examples of complex hyperbolic lattices that are left orderable, but that's kind of, there's like maybe one example that I know of, and, and that's all, all, all we know. I mean, Bertrand and I, okay, or no, maybe I, Bertrand might know more, but, <laughs> but he should tell me, okay. So if he know, if he does, but okay, so, um, oh, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I'm tell, I'm gonna tell you that this, of, of course, is built in in work of other people, especially in work of G's, who prove like the same thing. Under you know, he proved it in the case of of Diffius. He proved it in the case of Diffius, and he also proved it in the case where you assume you don't have a a finite orbit. Okay. But the thing is, when you have a finite orbit, you can pass a, to a finite index subgroup that fixes that orbit, and then, you know, the complement of this finite set of points is just like a bunch of intervals, and then you, you get an action in the line. So, so basically, what we prove is that any action in the line is trivial. And, and one of the main tools, <coughs> if not the main tool, was like using this space that Bertrand describe the space of harmonic actions. So, yeah, so, so I, I also should say that this theorem, or in the case of actions in R, lattices left orderable, there's like work of, I mean, this was proven like on the end of the 90s by, by David Morris, who proved like the case of SL, SL and Z, and most non-uniform lattices, uh, the Q rank greater or equal than two, basically. And, and Lucy Lifshitz as, as well, who proved some cases. Okay, so, yes. Oh, um, you put home of S2? Yeah, so, so this, we know nothing, okay? So, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll put that, like this open question, like in the case of the, the two sphere and the other spheres, we know nothing. So let me. 
Okay, maybe I have another board, right? <laughs> okay, now this. Oh no, you cannot do it at the same time. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so, so my plan right now is to, to kind of state some open questions related, I think, to, to, to the talk and to like mapping class groups. And, um, and then just give an outline of the proof. And, and then it, it's going to go really bad, OK? No, I'm, I'm joking. It's going to be good. It's going to be good, OK? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so, so, so the. Um, Yes, yeah, so some open questions which are re related and, and maybe approachable. This w one question, so open questions, which are, so, so one is, okay, gamma is a finite index subgroup, finite index subgroup of SL, let's say NZ, and N greater or equal than three. So may maybe one that, I mean, not sure how approachable, but I, I think it's might be approachable. Is it's just trying to to show this that actions in R two just by assuming the action is free. So, so this is like very kind of really kind of you know assuming action is free is so, so mean, meaning that for every gamma in gamma, if phi gamma x is equal to x for some x, then phi gamma is the identity. So I, I, even that we don't know. So in, in, in R, like free actions, you know, it's just like by translations. So, uh, we, we were saying at the end of the first talk, uh, Nicholas talk, of the, and but, but in in R two there are plenty of like free homomorphisms that act free. So, so for example, if you know the reef foliation, in in R two, yeah, you, you get things on flows, but, but but we don't know know much about these actions, and it's kind of it's a, it's a nice class of homeomorphisms, but I mean, group actions have not been studied very much. The question is, if, if such an action is free, yes. Yeah, if, if so, so yes. Is Assuming action is free, then, then the image is finite or uh, trivial. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, the, the image is one, one, one element. Um, what else? So maybe another one is, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if this could be yeah, proven, like just assume you, you have an action in the mapping class group of like the, the sphere with respect to a, a Cantor set, but not to a Cantor set, because I, I think this group is like, it's not so good, but, but you put two Cantor sets, like in, like in, so, so suppose you, you preserve two Cantor sets that are disjoint of each other, and you're looking at this mapping class group, and is this trivial, or is it trivial? For K1, K2 counter sets. So, so, so another thing that you might say, okay, maybe I can look at the mapping class group of R2 minus a counter set, and um, or yeah, or or this one, K that I called K, restricted, same thing, but with respect to the point at infinity. Right, the, the the one of the where the ray graph acts and all things go well. 
So, so, so what happens is that this group is, is left, left orderable. Uh, and so, so, so like the, our, our, our theorem applies, so it, it, I mean, we would not be using the structure of the hyperbolic space. The, the, but, but, but this group is, is, is left, left, left orderable. So, I mean, it's. Sorry, what's the group? Left orderable? No, circular orderable. <laughs> is, is, so, orderable. circularly orderable. Which means that um, any, okay, any finitely generated subgroup like acts on the circle or, <laughs> or actually th this one embeds into homey of S1. S1. Okay. And, and, and the way you could see this is just you, you, you take a mapping class and then you lift such a way that, so, so there is some point corresponding to, I, I can lift to the universal covering in such a way that there's a preferred kind of point that is like a lift of, of this infinity and, and, and you take your lift fixing that point and this will be well defined up to like the translation corresponding to the cusp here and so, so, so that's the, 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 the way. Yes, yes, yes. So, so you live to, to the, um, yeah, this, yes. So you identify this with the universal covering of R2 minus the Cantor set minus infinity. And um, infinity. Ah, infinity is not there. Yeah. This? Yeah. Minus, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, 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 sorry, sorry. I was thinking S2, S2. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, of course, yes, sorry, sorry. R2 is S2, okay. Um, Okay, so yes, so now I'm gonna try to explain the, the outline of the proof. Are there any other questions? What about rational maps? Ah, yes, esadic, esadic arithmetic lattices. Yeah, that. We didn't, we didn't prove it. I mean, probably like the same tools will apply, but we didn't do it. Yes, yes. It, it, it should say something similar, yes. But we don't know. We, I mean, there, there is like so, some result that maybe we, like that is not clear that it's gonna work, but I, I, I think it's approachable. That's all I can say. Um, yes, so. Then, yes, so I'm gonna give the outline of the proof. If there are no other questions, so let's. So, so the outline of the proof, the, the idea is to, you start with the, your action, and then you try to conjugate your action, and at the end, you want to get that it's an action by translations. And then you, you know there are no actions by translations, and then you, you win, okay? So, but, but how do you, how do you do that? So, so the, the idea is to take stationary measure, like the one that Bertrand was taking. You take a stationary measure in R that is invariant by the group, and then you show it's invariant. And then w after you show it's invariant, then this measure is equivalent to Lebesgue measure, and then you show it's trivial. But, but then you, you have to be a little bit um, so the problem is, okay, how do you go from stationary to invariant? And, and that's like the main issue. So, so let, me, let me try to state things more precisely. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
so the kind of the, the, the idea of the proof is, is to show show that so you have your your action okay so what, what am I proving what am I proving I'm, I'm gonna prove that I'm gonna assume gamma is is containing SL, SL3R just simple it's a lattice and I have a, an action into the group of homeomorphism of R, which by the theory by the theorem of G's or like what, what he proved, the only thing that we have to prove is that this is trivial. Okay? We want to show we want that the image of P is, is finite. Oh and what what we are, the way we're gonna do is okay. We're gonna suppose is not the case. So suppose is not the case. It's a proof by contradiction. Then, um, because these groups have no homomorphism to Z, then we we can conjugate to a minimal action because of Nicola explained that. And and then, so so the idea is to show is to show that um, phi pr preserves um, a, a radon measure nu on r, OK? But if, if it preserves a radon m measure, then uh, as Bertrand was saying, a any measure on R is equivalent to a measure, uh, to, to Lebesgue measure, up to a homeomorphism. And actually, this is true for Rn. A any measure in Rn of full support, you can find a homeomorphism which, which make it into Lebesgue measure. This is like a nice theorem. And then, but okay, we don't need that. We don't need that. Let's not go where we don't want to go. Let's go where we want to go. So we, we want to, to show that it preserves like a radon measure. And, and the, um, so, so what we, we will do is like, we, we, will take, we will take stationary measure, stationary measure, nu on R, and then sh show nu is Invariant is gamma invariant, but because the, the space is not compact and, and it's much better to work with compact spaces, be, because like um, yeah, I'll, I'll explain a bit later why it's so crucial to to, to use a compact space. Then we're gonna replace this R in in. in Instead, we're going to work with uh, this space Z that Bertrand, that, that, um, the, the space of harmonic actions. So, so what we will do is uh, replace, we, we instead of that, we will um, consider um, the space Z the action of gamma in, in the space Z, the, the space of, okay, some people call it the Rouen space. I'm gonna call it the Rouen space. Okay, so so the, the Rouen space, uh, and uh, there is like, you have a compact metric space, and now you, I want to prove there is a, an invariant measure here. So. The problem, so, so there is like this trick, which is the suspension. I mean, it's not trick, it's, it's very kind of common in, in, in representation theory, it, it is, is to, to, to go from um, the representation of a group to, to the representation of a, you know, from a lattice to the representation of a group containing the lattice. It's called like the suspension construction, induction. This is called induction. But, but 
So what we will do, because gamma is, is algebraically is very difficult, we, we're gonna replace the action of gamma with our, an action of G, an action of the Lie group G. And, and this is what is called suspension. So, so, so what you do is you consider this new space, which is G cross uh, Z mod gamma. And this space where, where the identification is, is given by um, G comma Z is identified with G gamma minus one comma gamma Z. So it, it, it's a bundle over G mod gamma. And, and it has an action of G by left multiplication. So G acts by left multiplication and, and this action is encoding the action G acts by left multiplication. This action is encoding all the action of gamma in Z and actually any property that you want to prove about the action in gamma in Z, there's a corresponding property about the action of G in X, okay? So, so the trade-off is you started with the space, which was maybe simple and you have the action of this group that was maybe horrible. And, and then you got an action of a nice group, G, in a space that is, is, is more complicated, okay? And, and, and what we will do is that we will show, we will show that G preserves a probability measure, preserves a probability measure measure on, on X. And actually, preserving a probability measure on X, this only happens if gamma preserves a probability measure on Z. You, you have to show this, but, but, but um, so, so, so that's what we will, so I, I will try to explain. Um, are there any questions? Um, no, no, I mean, no, no, I mean, yeah, this is because, you know, if G preserves a probability measure, the projection has to be hard in G mod gamma because it's the only G invariant measure in G mod gamma, but immediately it projects to, yeah. So, so then, uh, are there any other questions? Yes. Is a stationary measure? Yeah, so the thing is to prove instead of stationary measure. Oh, yeah, so in, instead of doing everything on R, I, I'm gonna to do things yeah. here in this space. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I take a G stationary measure on, yeah. on X and then prove it's invariant, okay? So, so, so that's what, what I'll do. So, so for that, what you do is, is you take, uh, probability measure on G. So for example, a measure supported in the ball of radius one on G. This probability measure, um, just like uniform, uh, uniform in the ball of radius one in G. And then I'm gonna take the um, stationary measure. So we're gonna take um, stationary measure, take nu one, a G stationary measure on, on Z. And then we're gonna show nu one is, is G invariant. Yes. Yeah, I think maybe I didn't give a good answer of like how, okay, once we have a gamma invariant probability measure on Z, how to get a, um, a, 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 a something happen? No. 
on X. Oh, yes, on X, on X, on X. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. Yeah, please tell me, like, um, yeah, like, when you see this type of errors. So, uh, so I, I was saying that, yeah, so, so when you have a probability invariant measure on Z, what you could do, like, Z has, like, this foliation by lines of the flow, right? And you, you could look at, like, this disintegration of the measure in, in the leaves, as Bertrand was doing in, in his second lecture, and then this would give you like a copy of R with an invariant measure on on, on these leaves. Y yes. S what X? Yes. So it's not necessarily compact because this is not com might, might not be compact. So we will assume it's compact. <laughs> okay. But but like. So let's, but, but I mean, this is one of like the technical issues, like very important technical issues. So for uniform, for uniform, no, 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 the theorem is true for any lattice, but, but we had to deal with this technical issue somehow. In the case of gamma being non-uniform, yeah, no, in, in, in that case, I mean, we had to like do like things a bit different, but kind of the idea is kind of the same. I mean, yeah, it, it takes, yeah, it, it would take a little bit of time to explain that. So, so what's, so, so then I, I have to tell you that this, which is more important than this talk, that is that that there's a correspondence between stationary measures of, of a G action and something that is called like P invariant measures. So, so, so there is like G stationary measures, measures on X are, are, are into one to one correspondence to P invariant measures. I, I have to tell you who's P, okay, invariant measures. measures on X. So, so P is, is what is called, so, so for SLNR, it's called the minimal parabolic subgroup, and, and, and for, for this, it, it, it just corresponds to upper triangular matrices. And, and there is, like, uh, this kind of a map, from, it has to do with something that is called the Poisson boundary, okay? And, and, and so, the, so the correspondence is not very easy to explain, but I'll just tell you like how the map works one way. So, so it, you take a measure, which is P invariant, and then you send it to this other measure, which is, you, you average, over the maximal compact subgroup of 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 k of of g, okay. But 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 this you see this stationary measure depends on the probability measure that you choose on g. Actually, this thing, if the measure is a nice measure, it does not depend. Okay. So 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 this is something kind of nice, and and it's also so, so there is. There's something that maybe most of us ha have seen in, in the case of just functions, which is the fact that is 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 the fact that harmonic functions, just in the case of SL2R. So harmonic functions in the disk correspond to L infinity functions on the boundary, right? So, so, so there is like, so, 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 so the boundary is, is actually G mod P, G mod P. So, so, so there is a correspondence between P invariant L infinity functions on G, or functions in L infinity of G mod P, with um, harmonic functions. So this is for measures, so, so there's like some relation correspond to harmonic functions. So, so, so it has to do something with this and 
it, it's a very, very nice topic for harmonic functions on, on yeah, on, on G mod K. So, so this is what, like, like, Forstenberg proof, like, a harmonic, like, L infinite functions in G mod P correspond to harmonic functions on, on the symmetric space, on X. Let's call it on X, symmetric space. X mod, yeah, X. Yes. Yeah? Ah, yes, 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 yes. And on X, J mod K, symmetric space. <laughs> <laughs> symmetric space. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, 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 so you start with, with the stationary measure, and then using this correspondence, you get a p-invariant measure. But so, so that's the idea. It, now we, we have to get from here. We get new two, or which is a p-invariant measure. on x, but actually there's no a canonical p. There are many, uh, there are many different types of, of p's, okay? And, and there are actually kind of six canonical choices of p, okay, in some sense. So, so, so there is not a canonical, uh, so, so, so then, Okay, I'm gonna call it this. Um, okay, maybe I'll call it this new prime. Oh, okay, okay, new, new two, new two. P invariant measure. So, so actually, uh, for each. So, so I'll, I'll show you like the choices of P, because I, I also have my board. So, so, so for G S L three R, okay. And A, this subgroup, the diagonal subgroup, there are six choices of P containing this A. Mm -hmm. So for each one of them, you're gonna get an invariant measure, a P invariant, PI invariant measure. So in that way, we can construct, um, we can construct six, measures, six probability measures, each one of them invariant by one of these subgroups. And, and they are related to each other in some way. They are related by what is called like the, the vial group. It's just, you know, like just by conjugating by appropriate uh, permutation, you could get this. So, so then we get that there exist six um, probability measures. Okay, m m maybe I'll, I'm calling mu one, mu two, mu six, which are <laughs> pi invariant, and in particular, they are all of them are invariant by a, by this diagonal subgroup. And, and then, in the proof, what we did is show that there are at least three of those that are the same. Okay, so, 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 so then, uh, what we do is we show that at least three of them, three of the, P, the new eyes, Coincide. So are the same measure. So so we have three three o, 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 o of these that are the same. So so we're gonna get that. So if we do that, let, let's say the measure was invariant by this one, this one, and this one. Okay. But if we prove it was invariant by this one, what happens is that any three of these groups generates the whole group. So you, you know you prove your measure. This, the ones corresponding to this one was invariant, so, so you get invariant by this larger subgroup. And then using this, you get invariant by this, and this, you can generate this thing here 
using basically all, all these things. If you take this one and this one, you can generate this one, maybe. Or maybe this one and this one, you can generate this one. OK. Or maybe I, take, I have to take the groups again. Or, 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 OK, so yeah, you generate this one using that. Uh, and, and that's the, uh, the end of, of, of the proof. Um, I, 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 maybe I, I should say that the, the way of that, OK, maybe I ran out of time. So I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll stop right here. And if you have questions, let me know. Yeah. Yes. What happened? How? Yeah. So, so, so the thing is like the the way y you show like three of these co coincide is so so suppose there's the action was not in Z but actually in R by homeomorphism in R. So so in R one dimensional you get like a Lyapunov exponent which correspond so. So, so, so there is like a, a linear functional, which is a Lyapunov exponent I, I, in the fiber or in the R. So when you move in this, which is a linear functional from A into R, and, and it tells you that um, if, if this is negative, if this is negative, then you have the G mod gamma and you have the R. It says that if you have two points, then on, under the flow, a flow of this, they are going to get contracted, get contracted. And then, so, so what you do is, is you show that for, for any two of these, uh, or like for any two vial chambers where, where the, this thing is negative, or you can find w one of these singular elements where it's negative, then they have to coincide. Uh, and, and, th and the idea is to kind of, I mean, there is something that like of higher rank that is being used that is like, I if you take this singular element here, this element is, is invariant by, by, by this. B both are invariant by this thing here. But, but this is what is called like the this correspond to to the unstable foliation of or, or like the unstable subgroup of corresponding to this a so uh, and so 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 you have two measures mu one and mu two which are invariant by this subgroup and are a invariant and then you want to show is the same. So, so what you do is kind of you um, you have two uh, maybe uh, yeah. So, so what you do is, is you find the idea is to use Birkhoff's Birkhoff ergodic theorem and show that there are two generic points for which the orbits of, of these two. two Birkhoff generic points converge. So, 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 but. Com so just no, I think I, 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 I can't explain. I mean, I, I can say like, okay, you know, in the fiber they would get close because because of this global contraction property. But then you want to make it go in the same direction in the base, and for this you use that these two measures are invariant by this, and this controls kind of the future. So you, you take two generic points, and then you change their future in such a way that they go in the same direction somehow, because you have control over the future. And then, and then but, but also in, in this direction, I have because of the Lyapunov exponent. And, and then you, you prove, if you, know, if you have er, Birkhoff-Ergodic theorem, says that you know, if the orbits go in, in the same 
then they have to be the same measure. So, so this is m like, I, I can explain in more detail with more time, but yes. Thanks for asking me this question also because I can say the pr a little bit about the proof, yeah. Yes. So for example, you think the stationary measure on the real line, how do you pass that measure to the given space? Ah uh, yes, yes. So yes, yes. So so Bertrand like constructed this stationary measure in in in, in R, right? In, in in the line, but but the way it goes through C. I, I, I mean, I, I can. I think I'm gonna skip the question and I'll explain to you later if if you want because. Yeah, it, it takes some, so actually, yeah, the, this measure just, it would be the conditional measure of, of, of this measure on Z, it's called, but yeah, I mean, a stationary measure on gamma or like on Z, y you know, if you take any probability measure in gamma, it would not work. It would not correspond to a G stationary measure on X, you have to take a, proba a specific probability measure, which is, is, is like a construction of Forstenberg, like this specific probability measure on gamma, which corresponds to G stationary measures. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not obvious, yeah. M factorial invariant measures, yes. Yeah, like a lot more difficult to, to actually like, find these ones that are the same? Or, or um, no, 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 it's not M factorial invariant measures. It's, it's, you know, it's the number of P, the, the number of vile. It's, is the, uh, it's, or oh, maybe it's M factorial? Yeah, maybe it's N factorial. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The, the proof doesn't get more difficult. The proof doesn't get more difficult. Yeah, it's. Yes. Right. So, to say that the same approach could work to improve the theorem for actions in the circle. Yes. I don't know how different it is from the G, say, G's proof uh, for in the circle because there's some algorithm theory going on in G's proof. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. Yeah, I. I don't, I don't remember, but I, I, I know it's very similar because he, he constructs like this, you know, map from G mod P into probability measures of S1. And, and, and this, what you do is, you take G cross, that will give you the P invariant measure on the suspension on G cross S1 mod, mod gamma. But, but then, where does he use the higher rank? I don't remember. But maybe we, we should talk about this later. Yes. What? what? Ah, is the action, yes, yes. Yes, actually, w w what he uses is some, he uses somehow the ergodicity as well of, yeah. of, of gamma in G mod H, where H is actually this unstable subgroup, this subgroup, G mod A. <coughs> yes, so, so, so this, like, this triple of points corresponds to, G mod A corresponds to this triple, triple of points in, in, in the, yeah, so, so he's using the ergodicity. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen a, a lot of the proofs in higher rank, they use these singular directions. Um, um. Yes, and, Andres. What is known for higher rank languages for properties? We get properties of the algorithm. Are you going to kind of start with the properties? Start the limit of the properties? No, I don't know. I don't know because I no I'm I'm really not an yeah we can talk about that but I, I really don't know anything about that.
Yeah. I, I'm not sure. Does that not act in a hyperbolic space? That was my question for you. Does this act in a hyperbolic space? B because using that, I mean, maybe you can prove. I mean, I, I think at uh, the end, you know, if you don't understand like the, um, the, no, the elementary actions in, in this or like the elementary groups on these mapping class groups, kind of everything is a bit like, okay, fuzzy, so, yeah, so like what, what are the elliptic groups of this ray, or like the mapping class group of R2 minus a Cantor set, or the parabolic groups, yes, so, yeah, it seems far, but I mean, it also, it's kind of nice to, to see maybe, you know, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah.